Hi, I'm Les Quindipan. I'm a sales application engineer with Listen Inc. Once again, I'm proud to announce a new release, Soundcheck 19. Today's video, I will tour you through the new features of Soundcheck 19. New features include multi-RTA, real-time analyzer, room acoustics, RT60, Amp Connect 621 control, Wasapi exclusive mode, a new diagnostics window, and USB knob control. First up is the multi-RTA. Now supports multi-channel input, including power averaging of selected inputs. This means you can now view multiple inputs simultaneously in the RTA. This is particularly powerful in test applications where real-time feedback is essential. For example, tuning of your DUT. Let's check it out. So I have a virtual instrument configuration open, and you'll see the new multi-RTA on the right side. Uh, right now, I have it set up with two inputs. This is on my uh, test head right here, one on the left ear, one on the right ear. Uh, and you'll see the settings for the RTA are identical to the uh, previous RTA. Uh, we choose our signal path here, uh, our octave resolution, our resolution. Uh, we have weighting and averaging. Uh, the difference here is I can add multiple inputs. Uh, so these are settings for the first channel input. These are settings for the second channel input. I can easily add channels through the plus uh, button up here, as well as I could add an average. So in this case, I could select the inputs that I want to power average as part of this measurement. Okay, and you'll see that I have a new uh, average color here. So let's just kind of show it here. Uh, here's a classic application of the multi-RTA, uh, which is prior to doing a headphone test measurement, I want to verify that I have a very good seal of the left and right. Uh, so I've set up a pink noise here, and if I start, you'll actually see the left and right ears have pretty equal balance of energy. And if I open up or release this left ear, which is the blue, uh, you'll see a dip. Okay, so that's real-time feedback of what is uh, taking place through the headphones and the ear seal on this head block. So that's the uh, multi-RTA. Uh, one other really uh, useful application might be a six microphone array in an automobile tuning application. So you can tune and get feedback in the RTA uh, in real time. Very much like uh, the existing RTA, uh, I can also save these curves to my memory list. Okay, there they are. Here's my average on an XY graph. Uh, and also, like all of our other instruments, this can be applied as a step in a virtual instrument acquisition. So Room Acoustics RT60 analysis has been added to Soundcheck 19, and this is useful for characterizing how your device will perform or interact with the acoustics of a room. It can also help identify problems with acoustics in a room so it could be treated accordingly. For this demonstration, I'm going to use an install demo sequence called Room Acoustics. This installs of Soundcheck 19. The traditional method of measuring room acoustics usually involves injecting noise into a space, turning off the noise source and measuring the decay. Uh, Soundcheck uses a, a more modern method, uh, which is we generate a log sweep and use a TSR algorithm to derive or pull the impulse response. That method, one, it's much, much faster. Two, uh, generally only requires one measurement at each location. Uh, and three, uh, background noise and distortion, distortion typically from the uh, source speaker's source, has little influence on the, the actual measurement. Okay, so let's look at the sequence. Uh, gonna open up the analysis step. And as I said, we'll use a log sweep with a TSR algorithm, and that's what's selected up here. And if I move over to the time tab, uh, we'll see the room acoustics settings at the bottom. Uh, these will be visible if you have the room acoustics module installed. Uh, here we could choose what our octave resolution is, full octave or third octave. On the left side, our reverb times, and on the right side, clarity. 
Uh, think of clarity as early energy, sound energy ratio against late sound energy ratio, uh, where late reflections are unfavorable. And then we have a checkbox here to also show the impulse response and the backward integrated impulse response. So let's run the sequence. Okay, and as I said, I'm using recall data where I'm comparing the uh, response of a small conference room versus a large conference room. So I'll say yes to the recall step. And so what we have are four displays. On the left side, we are looking at a stretched out impulse response of the small and large conference room, the small room being in blue. And what we're really doing is where it flattens out, everything on the right side of that uh, decay is noise. If we cut out the noise, we could derive what we see on the right side, which is the backward integrated impulse response. And what we do is we add the energy from the uh, backward integrated impulse response to uh, calculate the reverb time and clarity. So the top graph on the left is looking at the decay. And of course, the smaller room has a sharper decay. Uh, the y-axis here is time. And on the right side, we're looking at clarity. And as you would expect in the small conference room, a higher degree of clarity. The y-axis uh, there is in dB. Lastly, there are dedicated room acoustics tools available. Integration and soundcheck assures that you are using calibrated signal paths to perform your measurements. AmpConnect 621 is Listen's new all-in-one high-resolution multi-channel uh, test interface. Uh, this is really an extension of our previous AmpConnect ISC. Uh, soundcheck 19 adds full control of this interface. Uh, but just a summary of this interface, it's uh, 621, six inputs. They could be configured as line or microphone inputs, uh, two line outputs, as well as one amplifier. We support both SCM mic power as well as IEPE uh, mic bias on the 621. Uh, like the ISC, there's an internal impedance box, so we could do uh, impedance measurement. Digital I.O. relay control uh, also in the 621. If you look at the front panel, you'll notice there are no button pushes. We do have status indicators, which will uh, indicate if there's signal uh, or if there's peaking. Let's look at the support in Soundcheck 19. If I go to the Setup Hardware tab, okay, you'll see I've got a 621 configured. You'll see I've got much more inputs configured as an ASIO uh, device. Uh, these are my input channels. I have discrete inputs for the amplifier and impedance. And VP uh, auto populate. So this is a self-calibrating uh, interface. It's calibrated as it leaves uh, listen. And also, we could support sampling rates all the way up to 192 kilohertz. OK, and if I switch over to the listen hardware tab, as I said, fully integrated software support of the Amp Connect in Soundcheck 19. Here is my 621. Okay, and again, with multiple inputs, I could configure each of these inputs uniquely. Uh, here you'll see I've got uh, two IEPE mic bias assignments, which is powering my head block here. I also have an SCM microphone on input three. And input four, I've got this uh, quarter inch uh, reference microphone. Okay, uh, and then here are the output assignments. Another nice thing about the 621 is that we have integrated full TED support. So if you have a TED's microphone, so this uh, quarter inch microphone is a TED's compatible uh, microphone. And if I select the input, which is input four here, okay, you'll actually see I can click this button to read the TED's data off. The TED's data will return the serial number as well as the internal calibration that's stored on this microphone. Okay, and there it is. There's the serial number, okay, and there's the uh, sensitivity uh, as stored on that, that microphone. So that's fully integrated AmpConnect 621 support. Soundcheck 19 adds Wasapi exclusive mode. Wasapi exclusive mode bypasses the Windows internal mixer sending audio streams directly to the audio interface. Wasapi delivers lower latency and ensures the sample rate conversion does not occur. 
And because we have an exclusive lock on the audio interface, system sounds cannot dis disrupt your measurements. So let's just look at that very quickly in Soundcheck. I, I'm running here a BQC, which is pairing with this Bluetooth headphone. And typically the uh, driver for the BQC has been a WDM MME driver, but I've set this up as a Wasapi device. And again, the advantage here is accidentally my system sounds cannot output through that Bluetooth interface. Other advantages of Wasapi is that uh, you can pair it with other interfaces. So for example, if I have a 621 running with the ASIO driver, I could add another 621, set that up as a Wasapi device and expand my channel count. So Soundcheck 19 adds USB knob control. And USB knob control is a simple and inexpensive way to add tactile control uh, to your signal generator, kind of giving it the feel of the classic manual signal generator. So with this, I could do fine tuning and look for defects potentially uh, in my other instruments. So on this demo, I'm using a signal generator with a distortion analyzer and a spectrum analyzer. I will do a very simple uh, frequency sweep followed by an amplitude sweep. A new diagnostic window has been added to Soundcheck 19. The diagnostic window can log info, errors, and warnings. Uh, dialogues can be suppressed, which might be important in an unattended uh, test environment or a highly automated test environment, uh, for example, a production line. We can log these uh, errors as well, and those logs could be sent to our support department for further analysis. So let's look at the diagnostic window. Uh, you can open the diagnostic window from the file menu in Soundcheck. Okay. And as you see here, I have a few errors. I could decide what I want to display or hide. So if I did not want to look at uh, errors, I could hide all of those and just log info and warnings. Uh, settings for the diagnostic window is found in the preferences window. If I go to the miscellaneous tab, on the left side, I could uh, decide whether I want the diagnostic to automatically open at launch. I could sort the order as well as show how many entries I want to see in the diagnostic window. Uh, here, I could choose whether I want to create a text log of the uh, diagnostic window. And if I've hidden a message in the diagnostic window, do I want to log the hidden messages? The advanced tab is where I could suppress the dialogues. And again, this might be important in a production or automated environment where uh, maybe it's unattended and you don't want the dialogue to appear, but just uh, log the errors into your diagnostic window. Thanks for watching. Soundcheck 19 is shipping. And as always, it's available as an automatic upgrade to active support contract holders. Contact your sales rep or sales engineer if you're interested in upgrading or adding a module or instrument to your existing soundcheck license.